Hello, and welcome to a quick presentation on the upcoming update for Waterline for the Unreal Engine 4. Uh, let's dive in and see what's new. So, once we open up the folder, we can instantly see that there's a... The first folder is called uh, Waterline Actors. Uh, going inside, we can see that there are two main Waterline Actors for large waters, currently visible on screen, and small. Uh, we also have uh, ultimate actors, but we're going to discuss those in a different video. The large waterline actor is currently seen on the screen and uh, is perfect for large uh, seas or lakes. And uh, small water is for a more localized pool-like uh, structure or pond. Uh, we also have uh, a blueprint actor that dictates uh, light direction for several shaders. Uh, for example, here you can see uh, rotating this changes the direction of the subsurface scattering on the waves. Uh, we'll discuss these uh, features in depth in later tutorials, but for now, uh, let's have a look at some of the water materials. Going inside, we can see that there are three main categories for architectural visualization, uh, real-time PC uh, game applications, and high-end mobile platform. Um, going into the architectural visualization, we could see that there are for materials for surface, underwater surface, and a couple of ultimate actors that we're going to discuss again in a separate video. Um, selecting the surface actor, uh, we could see that there is an instance that if we select our uh, large waterline actor by selecting this icon here, uh, we have several slots and we could quite easily change and update materials on this blueprint actor. For example, if we simply drag and drop, we see now that the blueprint is using the uh, most complex uh, version of the waterline surface material, which has uh, uh, specular highlights coming from the light sources. And we could do a similar thing for the underwater act, uh, surface, which is uh, currently visible. Uh, I suspect there won't be too much uh, change here, and uh, yeah, they, the underwater is a uh, pretty uh, standard looking. <laughs> uh, adding uh, specularity to it won't change the scene too much. Uh, if we go to the PC, however, um, we could see a more drastic change going back to the original uh, high preset. Uh, we could switch also to a medium one, which is an unlit version of the water material. Uh, we do lose certain features like the more accurate lighting and uh, screen space reflections from objects near the water, but we do gain a lot of performance. And we also have a low material, which has no transparency, but has specular uh, highlights and uh, screen space reflections. Uh, let's go back to our highest quality one. Uh, there are similar presets for the underwater material. We currently have the, well, we'll just uh, throw in the high preset, um, which is on by default. There is also a medium, which is, again, unlit. Uh, you do lose, um, again, the screen space reflections from objects intersect intersecting the water, but for either murky or very deep waters, it can be a huge performance boost. Uh, there is also a low preset that uses uh, a mask material, which keeps the reflections, but at certain angles, uh, the outside world does not look that great. So let's go back to our highest quality one. Uh, next, we have the mobile materials, but we're going to discuss those in a later video as uh, some preparations need to be made for them to display properly. Um, there are some ultimate materials for the PC as well, but again, we're going to discuss this in a tutorial video. Uh, finally, we have the underwater post-processing materials, which come again in several versions for high, medium, low, and mobile. So what you see currently is the high uh, version, which is, uh, the, which is calculated before the Unreal Engine Tone Mapper, and that allows us to have uh, Tone Mapper uh, based features integrate with it uh, quite well, such as the screen uh, flare that you see right now, the grime mask 
from the time mapper. We could also see that uh, screen space reflections for the underwater surface uh, fade objects away along with the fog. So as soon as the white cube disappears, so does its reflection. By contrast, if we go to the low version of this material, we could see now that we could see the reflections uh, from these objects, despite not seeing them uh, because of the fog. If we go into our materials, uh, I mean uh, near our surface, we now see that the that the lens flare is interest is not visible as it was with the high preset. Uh, there's also a medium preset, and that is after that is before tone mapper as well, but it, it does not calculate for uh, translucent objects. So this is best used in combination with the low underwater surface. Uh, next, we have uh, three maps uh, that are used for uh, examples, just to show you a couple of presets. Here we have the tropical map, which uses the most accurate version of our uh, underwater acoustics, which, is a, which version is based on uh, a light function using an animated texture. Uh, here, we could see a use of the underwater post-processing effects that is after the tone mapper. And while technically it does not display the underwater fog in uh, screen space reflections, it does give a really nice clear water feel to everything, and it's technically a bit easier to process. Uh, something we, sometimes, if the camera is on a large waterline actor, not during play, in editor, and you move away from the uh, center of the mesh, you could get a misalignment of the two shaders, but going near the waterline actor will fix this issue, and also pressing play will fix it as well. We'll touch, on, we'll touch uh, upon this issue more in later tutorials. Uh, this is just for the large waterline actor, the small uh, localized version that you will see right now in our next map does not suffer from this issue. Uh, in fact, here you can see that this uh, localized uh, waterline actor for small water is using uh, the medium water preset, which allows it to have a custom uh, cube map from a different environment, which can create some a nice, interesting, artistic uh, Expression. Um, finally, you can see here that now the surface water shaders support uh, an easy exchange of uh, custom normal maps for the water. You could have a smoother, smoother waves, more choppy ones like in the previous map. Uh, moving on, we finally have a cloudy overcast map with our screen uh, droplet, droplet post-processing effect. Uh, that also syncs up with the waterline effect, as you can see the droplets disappear past the waterline. Uh, we're going to discuss in later tutorials how this can be implemented and added in a better way. Uh, finally, we have the resources folder, which can be used for, which contains uh, just uh, several resources really that users can uh, access to better customize their effects and they and some help along with waterline running smoothly. Under blueprints, we have a functions folder which contains several custom functions for waterline. Under the MISC, several blank materials, uh, again, mainly used uh, in the blueprints. Uh, we have a free camera pawn blueprint and a base game blueprint. These are provided as a sort of template for the large waterline actor, which during play moves along with the position of the player control pawn. During larger, more complex uh, projects, you will ideally want to uh, replace that. Uh, there is some documentation on how this can be done. Uh, next, we have our models folder, which uh, contains all the waterline planes used. Uh, finally, next we have textures. Uh, for water displacement, different water normals, uh, acoustics textures, uh, a folder for all the textures used in the underwater rocks. 
um, HDRI uh, panoramas with cube maps used for lighting and backgrounds. Uh, under VFX, we have lens the lens flares used in the sunset map along with a lens gram and a couple of color lookup textures. Um, under the droplets, we have the textures for the effect you currently see on the screen. Uh, finally, water debris is the white specks on the underwater surface materials. Next, we have additional visual effects, which uh, contain the HDRI materials, uh, a volumetric fog material that we're going to show off in a separate video, uh, camera droplets material, uh, the acoustics, which are done via light functions, uh, there are a couple, and finally, acoustics, which are done via the decal material. So this concludes our look at Waterline. Um, we do plan on having several more tutorials coming up soon, helping you make uh, really nice projects really, really fast. So thank you for your time.